In this video, we are going to explore how to incorporate simultaneous play into an extensive form game using an information set. We will also discuss the definition of a strategy and examine how to convert extensive form representations of a game into strategic forms. By the end of this video, you should be able to represent strategic interactions between two or more people as both extensive and strategic form games and completely describe the set of strategies available to a player during a game. In our previous video, we began to explore how to represent strategic interactions using extensive form games such as this one. In this game, player 1 moves first and can choose either left or right. Player 2 moves second and can choose either hot or cold. When player 2 chooses, they know whether player 1 has chosen left or right. The payoffs tell us that player 1 likes right cold the best, left hot second best, left cold third best, and right hot fourth best. Player 2 likes right hot the best, left cold second best, left hot third best, and right cold fourth best. Suppose that instead of moving one after the other, Player 1 and Player 2 act at the same time. Is there a way that we can use the extensive form of a game to represent the situation involving simultaneous play? It turns out that we can, using a simple tool called an information set. An information set is a simple way to illustrate the fact that a player does not know which node they are at in a game. One way to draw an information set is to draw a circle around the nodes that a player cannot distinguish. In this game, if we want to represent the fact that player 1 and player 2 move at the same time, then we need to illustrate the fact that player 2 doesn't know whether player 1 has chosen left or right when player 2 makes their decision. We can do that by drawing a circle around both of player 2's nodes, which indicate player 2 doesn't know which node they are at. Another way to illustrate an information set is to connect all of the nodes in the information set using a dotted line. A third way is to draw a box around the nodes that are in the information set. No matter how you draw your information set, they all mean the same thing, which is that when player 2 chooses what to do, they don't know yet what player 1 has done. When you use information sets to create models of strategic interactions, there are two rules that you need to remember. The first rule is that each node can only be part of one information set. The second rule is that the branches coming out of each node in an information set must be the same. If they are different, then there is a way for the player at that information set to figure out which node he or she is at, and the game would no longer be a game of imperfect information. Now that we know what an information set is, we have another way to tell the difference between games of perfect information and games of imperfect information. In games of perfect information, all players know where they are in the game. One way to think about this is that in a game of perfect information, each node is in its own information set. In a game of imperfect information, there is always at least one information set that contains more than one node. If we wanted to be really picky about this, we could illustrate games of perfect information by drawing information sets around each individual node in the game. Usually, we don't bother doing this because it's redundant. Now that we have a framework for building models of games, we can start to think about how to solve them. The first step in solving a game is to define each player's set of strategies. A player's strategy is a fully specified plan of how they will play the game. The plan must include a plan for what to do at every possible information set where the player will potentially have to act, even if they never get to execute some parts of the plan. 
One way to think about a strategy is that if a player gave their strategy to a third party to play in their place, that third party would know what to do no matter where they found themselves in the game. The best way to learn how to define strategies is with some examples. So let's do some examples now. Let's start with our left-right hot-cold example. In this game, player one has one node, meaning that they have one information set. At this node, player one has two possible actions that they can choose, left or right. Therefore, player one has two possible strategies, play left or play right. Simple, right? Now let's consider the game from player two's perspective. Player two has two possible nodes, meaning they have two possible information sets in the game. Player two will find themselves at the left-hand node if player one chooses left, and at the right-hand node if player one chooses right. Because player two makes their strategy before they play the game, that is, before player one makes their choice, their strategy needs to include two parts, what to do if player one chooses left, and what to do if player one chooses right. Player two has two possible actions at each node, hot and cold. As a result, player two has four possible strategies. Always play hot, always play cold, play hot if left and cold if right, and play cold if left and hot if right. These four strategies put together which represent all of player two's possible strategies are called a strategy set. Let's contrast this example with the simultaneous version of the same game. Player one's strategy set is the same. They have two strategies, play left or play right. Now, however, the situation is different for player two. Because player two only has one information set, they only have two strategies as well, play hot or play cold. In the case of the simultaneous game, each player only has two possible strategies in their strategy set. Now that we can describe each player's possible strategies, we have a second way of modeling a strategic interaction, the strategic form game. The strategic form of a game is a represent representation of a game using a table. In order to model a game using the strategic form, you must describe who the players are, each player's strategy set, and each player's payoffs for each outcome of the game. Let's do a couple of examples to see how to convert our extensive form game examples into strategic forms. We'll start with our simultaneous game, since that's the simpler of the two. To create the strategic form, create a two by two table. Put one player in the rows and one player in the columns. Each row represents a strategy for player one, and each column represents a strategy for player two. At the intersection of each row and column, insert the player's payoffs. Normally, we list the row player's payoffs first and separate the payoffs with commas. We can call the possible outcomes of the game strategy profiles. Since this game has four possible outcomes, there are four possible strategy profiles in the game. Left hot, right hot, left cold, and right cold. Note that a strategy profile always contains one strategy for each player in the game. We can use the same procedure to convert the sequential game, except that because player two has four possible strategies, we need a table that has two rows but four columns. Recall that the first part of player two's strategy describes what to do if player one chooses left, and the second part describes what to do if player one chooses right. In this game, a strategy profile consists of a single action for player one and a strategy for player two that has contingencies for both the situations in which player two could possibly find himself. Thus, this game has a total possible strategy profiles equaling eight. Note 
that the number of strategy profiles will always correspond to the number of payoff cells in the strategic form table. This concludes this video. Now that we know how to set up games and specify players' strategies, we can start solving games. We'll start with that in our next video.